so welcome to gardening and oils this is a super fun class and i'm really really excited about it because i am no expert gardener not at all but i have been gardening most of my life my mom growing up we had a huge garden um the lot next to our house was vacant so we just had rows and rows and rows of gardening and um, I always loved, and even as we got older, raised beds, those sort of things. And as an adult, um, I've had my own garden in my backyard. And you can even, even if you don't have a yard, you can plant a lot of this stuff in planters. So if you live in an apartment, you can put it on your balcony. Um, some of these you can even grow indoors. So gardens can really be for anybody and they're super sustainable. It makes um, produce more affordable and available to you and your family. So gardening is great, but there are some stages of gardening that aren't that fun, like weeds and pests. Um, sometimes you have a bad harvest. And anytime during the, I mean, every year you're gonna encounter some or all of that. It's just inevitable. So this class, we're gonna talk about how to tackle those hardships during the gardening season. Um, I'm hoping to give you guys some tricks so you can take them and you can use them either on your indoor plants or outdoor plants. And hopefully you will see what we've experienced by using oils in our garden um, of how they help them grow and nourish them and really are a great uh, accompaniment to the plants themselves. So um, this is a great way for you to not have to use harsh chemicals. A lot of people will turn to pesticides and such to get rid of weeds and pests in their garden on the foods. And that's not anything that you want to do. This looks bad for you. Um, you want to get rid of the harsh chemicals. So this is a great way and a great alternative to do that. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Go for the chat. There's no delay, so it shouldn't. I'm just getting time to type. <laughs> okay, moving on. So some people on the call might not be familiar with what essential oils are. I don't know um, if everybody's a member or not. In fact, why don't we go ahead and do that? Why don't you in the chat box, just type a one if you're currently a Young Living member and type a two if you're not. So that way I kind of have an idea of like what kind of audience I'm talking to. Don't be shy, type your one and two people, you can do it. Okay, and as people are doing that, I'm going to keep talking. So essential oils are the chemical compounds that make up the lifeblood of a plant. So um, they're commonly referred to as the immune system of the plant. So like if you've ever torn a leaf in your yard and you notice how there's kind of like a liquid that beads up at the tear, that's the essential oil of the plant. It's going to the injury and it's working to repair. So we're able to use essential oils through the process, or we, we're able to get them through the process of distillation after the harvesting of the plant. The part of the plant that is with the beneficial chemicals is the seeds, limbs, bark, basically every part of the plant, okay? That's harvested and sent through a very, very meticulous distillation process. Every plant needs a very specific distillation time. And the great thing about Young Living is they have over 25 years experience of doing this. They are the pros in this industry. After the plant is distilled, a concentrated oil is the result. So it's very potent and loaded with uncountable benefits for your overall health and wellness. And it's bottled and shipped to you. And then you can use it in various ways, topically, aromatically, and internally. And you can use them on your plants too. The beneficial chemicals in the oils are absorbed in your body and for this class, your plants and your garden to maintain optimal overall health and wellness because they are so concentrated, a little, like a, just a couple drops go a long way. And so you'll kind of see that in some of these recipes, just how far a bottle of oil will go. All right, so it looks like we have most members, we do have one non-member, so that's cool. Welcome. All right. So Young Living, quality of your oils is really, really important. So I don't want you to sit through this class and then drive to Target. I love to use Target as an example because I love their dollar spot. Okay, I'm a Target addict. <laughs> 
All right. And so, but the one thing he will never see me buy from Target is their essential oils. Because tea tree is an inexpensive oil, but it's not a dollar. <laughs> Which, it, and it's not going to do what Young Living's oils can do. And the reason that I can confidently say that is because our seed to seal guarantee. So the FDA has almost no regulations and safety measures on the essential oil industry. So the oils found in drug, you know, drug stores and big box stores like Target, okay, and even other oil companies have been tested to find harsh synthetic fillers and chemicals in them. A cheap perfume grade oil is distilled at high pressure, which is not good for it, and high temperatures, which again is not good for it, and also distilled using chemical solvents, which is not what you want. And because of that, it yields an adulterated oil that can still be labeled as 100% pure, which in my opinion is a really scary thing because you basically are taking their word for it. So when you see in like the stores where it says 100% pure, they only have to have like 5% of what's in that bottle and essential oil for them to say that it's 100% pure because that portion of whatever's in that bottle is technically pure because there's no regulations on it. So Young Living decided to rise above that and create their own strict guidelines to ensure purity and that's our seed to seal quality commitment. They abide by very strict guidelines to fulfill the promise and sending only the best products to your home. So um, our plant material that is grown on corporately owned farms or carefully vetted partner farms that you can actually visit. So Young Living has open door policies, really, really important. Um, I have physically been on one of our farms and it's a really amazing experience and that is our seed to seal like you can go visit the farms and ask them to show you the process from start to finish and they will very happily too. Um, we believe in sustainable farming and sourcing practices and providing only the purest oil. Great care is taken to preserve and protect natural resources that's really, really important. All of the fields are hand weeded so there's zero use of pesticides. Um, any oils that retain, or all the oils retain their natural constituents and therapeutic properties, which is important because when you distill an oil, you want to make sure the oil that you're getting is going to be at its full benefit. And if you don't distill it at the proper time, at the proper temperature, um, you're not going to get everything that that plant has to offer. And so Young Living has years of experience knowing exactly when to harvest, exactly when to distill and at what temperatures. So you get the best product. And there's rigorous testing on every batch by internal labs as well as third party facilities. And the oils are carefully reviewed through every step to make sure that it meets the quality standards. So if you wanna know more information about our seed to seal quality commitment, you can go to the website seedtoseal.com. And there's a ton of information on there too. And I just love that I don't have to really worry or be concerned that these aren't high quality because I know I've physically seen it with my own eyes and I have never trusted a company more with their quality than I do Young Living. All right. So now that we got all of the formalities out of the way, let's dive into how to use oils with our plants because that's what we're all here for, right? So let's talk about bugs. I hate bugs. And it is no secret <laughs> that bugs will ruin your garden plants from eating the plants to taking a bite out of you, they can really, really mess up your gardening dreams. And you could use insecticide sprays, but why would you do that? That's at a cost to your health and to the environment. So, and pesticides actually lead to bioaccumulation of toxins in your body and even in the plants that are linked to chronic illness and disease. So we want to avoid those. And Young Living recently released an insect repellent that has been tested to repel mosquitoes, ticks, and fleas, and it's 100% naturally derived and plant-based. It contains pure sesame oil, a carefully selected blend of essential oils that are traditionally used in bug repellents, and it comes together to make up the bug repellent. And I love this stuff. Um, it is a pleasant citrusy aroma, and it's not sticky at all. You can actually make it into a spray and kind of dilute it a little bit with witch hazel. So it goes on, it kind of, it's like a gel, um, like a 
a thin gel, but you can actually make a spray so it goes on easier. Or if you are a DIY kind of person, you can make this outdoor recipe spray, which you should see up on your screen. So it's just witch hazel, water, some drops of essential oils of thieves, lemon, rosemary, and citronella. So for those of us that have oils, we know that citronella is free this month and thieves and lemon came in our kit and rosemary is a very inexpensive one to get. So, and if you don't have your oils, then basically three out of those four you can get in your starter kit if you make it your first essential rewards order. So and we'll talk about that later, don't worry. But you wanna mix all of these into a four ounce glass spray bottle and then just shake really well before each use. And then you can also spritz this on your plants at night. Okay, you don't wanna do it um, when the sun is up because of the lemon, it can burn the leaves. So you don't wanna do that, but you, if you could do it at night as it gets to be dusk or dark and the sun goes down, and it'll help keep the bugs away from your plants too. All right, pets. <laughs> so dogs like to dig, cats think it's their litter box. Um, and if you live in a more rural area, you might have problems with rabbits and deer as well. So while we love pets and wild animals, sometimes keeping them out of our gardens can be a pain. <laughs> A simple and safe way to encourage them to stay away is by using scents, because there are certain smells that animals just don't like, and it's not gonna harm them, but it is gonna deter them from coming towards that area. For example, dogs really dislike the smell of black pepper, and cats dislike the smell of rosemary. So if you were to use this Pet Be Gone recipe, basically you take strips of old clothing or washcloths, and get like a shallow pan of warm water and you're gonna do five to 10 drops of whatever oil you're using to deter that pet or pest. And if you have multiple pets that you want um, to stay away, then you can do multiple stakes with the Tide washcloth. So what you're gonna do is tear the, co the cloth into strips and you're going to mix this water and oil together and then soak those strips in that pan and then let them dry. Once they're dried, you're gonna put just wood stakes in the ground around your garden bed or flower bed or wherever you're trying to keep them out of. And you're gonna tie the strips of cloth around the stake. So um, it's also, so rabbits. So if you have trouble with rabbits, rabbits actually really dislike the smell of peppermint. And deer hate the smell of cinnamon and clove. So anything spicy. So if you don't have cinnamon or cloves, and you have thieves, use thieves because that has both in it. Um, and I, I think this is, goes to kind of, you know, show that when people joke and say there's an oil for everything, there really is an oil for everything. Like we're talking about keeping animals out of your garden bed with oils. <laughs> it's literally an oil for everything. So um, those are kind of the main pets and wild animals that I tend to see messing with your garden or your flower bed. So give that a try. And like I said, you can always tie, like you can have like stakes all around it and have one of each scent on the stake. It's going to keep the animals out. So it's just a really safe and effective way that, you know, if your kids got a hold of it or anything like that, or even if your dog decided to chew on the cloth, he's not going to harm himself with it. Chances are he'll leave it alone because he's not going to like the smell but it's a safe way to keep them away from your garden bed. All right, weeds. I can't tell you how much I hate weeds. <laughs> so you can waste so many hours of your life pulling weeds. The summer is not very long here in Washington. So I personally don't want to spend it pulling weeds. Um, if you're trying to get rid of an unwanted plant that does not involve harmful chemicals, because again, we talked about we're not going to do harmful chemicals, there are some safe alternatives. For example, weeds actually hate cinnamon. So really, really simple weed be gone spray, okay? This one's called Wither the Unwanted. <laughs> That's a fancy name, right? Wither the Unwanted. So you're gonna do in a four ounce glass spray bottle. And of course you can always make this bigger. So if you have like an eight ounce bottle or a 16 ounce bottle and you wanna like double or triple the recipe, you can totally do it. 
So this one calls for 25 to 50 drops of cinnamon bark, and then you're gonna do the rest with distilled water. And just shake really good before each use and just spray right at the roots, okay? And it's, they're gonna wither away. <laughs> they're gonna just shrivel up and die. Um, they, they don't like it. And another natural way that people do, like if you don't have any other plants around is you could add vinegar to the mix because um, plants really hate vinegar, but you'll want to be careful. Like this is a safe one to use like with grass and like flower beds and stuff because this won't kill the other plants that you want to keep alive. Vinegar will. <laughs> so if you have weeds in an area where you don't want any growth, then vinegar is a good route to go. Um, yes. It will kill like the, you know, crab grass, so like other types of weeds, but safe for grass, yes. Um, so you can kind of spray it at like the dandelions that are in your grass and it'll wither up and die. But again, don't put vinegar in it if you want other plants in the area to live. <laughs> so um, the other thing that you can do is you can actually create a spray to give your plants some love, right? So this is a drop or a mix of tea tree, peppermint, and citronella, and you're going to shake and spray along the affected part. So sometimes like the, the weeds will grow into and kind of take over the plant. So it'll start to actually like suffocate and kill the plant and it will start to block the pores of the plant that actually help the plant breathe. So you don't want that you because it'll eventually choke out your plant and kill it so i don't know if you've ever had like an overgrowth of weeds that kind of get intertangled with like say a rose bush for example it'll twist itself up the vine of the rose bush and then eventually it will suffocate the plant and the rose plant will die so one of the things that you can do to help your plants that you want to keep alive stay healthy and happy is you can use this plant love spray on them it helps to detour the weeds and it also helps to like nourish the plant itself so it breathes better and it just survives all right next up is companion plants i think this is really cool so if you've been gardening for a while you probably have heard of companion planting and that's basically where um, certain plants play well together while others do not kind of like us adults right <laughs> This is because every plant has certain nutrients that uses from the soil for growth and production of fruit or produce. And plants also excrete certain byproducts back into the soil that can either help or hinder the um, harvest around it. So if you were to grow two types of plants next to each other that both rely on say nitrogen, for growth, they will complete and over they will compete each other and overuse the nitrogen in the soil and basically starve each other out. So you're going to have a poor harvest. Versus, like, so an example of that would be corn and tomatoes. They do not play nice together. You you don't want to plant those in the same garden bed or right next to each other because they're going to compete for the same nutrients in the soil. On the flip side, if you have plants that are, if you have two types of plants next to each other that eat different nutrients out of the soil, they actually work together to promote each other's growth. So a good example of this would be tomatoes and carrots. They're actually really good to have next to each other because they work together in the soil. Therefore, if you plant next to each other, you're actually gonna have a more bountiful harvest. So what does that have to do with essential oils? And so you're telling you to plant carrots and tomatoes together. <laughs> If you don't have a particular plant in your garden, you can actually make a spray of what their companion plant would be and spray the plant with it or in the soil around it, and it will actually help you have a better harvest. So, for example, if you're looking to plant, like if you have green beans, then make a spray with lavender and basil if you have it, and just use on the soil and the leaves of the plant and it will help you have a better harvest of green beans. Broccoli, if you're growing broccoli, would be basil and thyme. Carrots, a great one, a companion for carrots is sage. So if you're not growing tomato, but you are growing um, carrots, okay, sage would be a good one to have. Cucumber also likes sage. Onions, the companion for onions is German chamomile. 
potatoes is basil and sage, and then tomatoes like basil. And then I added a couple more that aren't on this list, but some that I know are commonly grown in Washington. So that's zucchini. Zucchini actually um, does really well with mint and parsley. So like spearmint, or peppermint and parsley. Corn does really well with parsley. And then peas, so like um, sugar snap peas that grow up on the vine, celery seed and carrot seed and also parsley. So if you didn't know, we do have the celery seed and carrot seed oils. So they're distilled from the seeds of those plants. And those actually work really well as a companion plant or a companion spray for, um, for peas. So you can use that too. Any questions on companion plants? Nope. Okay, this is a really cool hack. I love this so much because this really does help you get a better harvest. Um, any companion plants for sunflowers? I don't know. That's a good question, though. I'm going to have to look that up. I will look that up and let you know. All right. So if you didn't know how gardens work, <laughs> there has to be pollination. So not for everything, I guess. Some plants do self-pollinate. Um, but fruits like peppers, so fruits like peppers can stand alone and produce fruit without ever being pollinated. But not every plant can do that. Lots of them need help to cross pollinate um, between male and female plants. So bees help you with that, okay? So we need our pollinator friends. Um, butterflies are another pollinator too. So if, you know, bees and butterflies, you want them in your garden, okay? Um, they will help you get your garden going. So it's really, really important for plants that don't self-pollinate that pollinators are there. And sometimes they're attracted to the smell of flowers. So what some people do is they plant flowers around or in their garden bed to kind of attract the pollinators to it because they tend to like the more sweeter plants. Um, but what you could do instead of doing that, like if you have a small space, especially, um, or you maybe you don't want to plant certain plants around it, you can create a pollinator party spray, not fun. <laughs> so this is just a blend of lavender and orange, so super sweet smelling and water. And you're just gonna mix it together and you're just gonna use a four ounce glass spray bottle, okay? And shake really well before each use. And then you're just going to spritz on the flowering beds of your garden plants. And that's going to encourage the pollinators to come and basically get the job done. So um, if you find that like your garden is lacking pollinators, then maybe this is, this is a good alternative to try before you start buying like other plants. Cause we've planted like lavender around our gardens and such to attract pollinators to it. And that's a good thing too, cause lavender will help detour pests as well. So you can go that route, but if you don't want to spend the money on a lavender plant, or maybe you just don't want to have that around your garden bed, then this is a good alternative to use. All right. So once you get through the year, the fun part is like basically reaping the harvest, right? So finally, um, you get to pick all of the fresh produce that's in your garden and Sometimes, I don't know if you're like me, but the produce sometimes, like you get so much that it will go bad before you can eat it. Well, that's because bacteria rests on your fruit and veggies. And without the support of the plant that it came from, the fruits and veggies break down and can actually get nasty quick. So it's really, really important to wash your fruits and veggies. And I highly recommend the thieves fruit and veggie soak for that. There also is a spray, a nice portable spray. So if you're like out and about, you can use the spray. But you basically soak the food in like your sink full of water with some of the fruit and veggie soak and the dirt and crud literally just like rinses right off and goes down the drain. I mean, it is the most amazing stuff I've ever used. I used to think I was washing my produce um, cause I'd like scrub really good with water. You know, if it looked extra dirty, sometimes I'd use like hand soap, which is horrible. Um, but I've never had cleaner produce than I have when I used 
this stuff. Like the water that's left behind is just disgusting. So really, really, really important to wash your produce, even if it's coming from your own organic garden, okay? It's really important to wash your produce. Um, you can even make your own produce soak if you maybe don't have the fruit and veggie soak yet, okay? But you have your starter kit. So you can do a sink full of warm water with several drops of thieves and lemon. I'd probably do like 10 to 15 of each in the sink. And that's super simple and that'll help cleanse your produce as well. And then the other thing that you'll want to do, um, so I don't know, something else that you can do, like do you ever get fruit flies? I hate fruit flies. I hate them with a passion. But sometimes when you reap the harvest and you've got it sitting on your counter, all of a sudden fruit flies are like in your house. So this is a nice diffuser blend that you can do right next to where you keep your produce on your counter. And it'll actually help keep them away. They don't like the smell. So what I would recommend doing is diffusing this on one side of your counter and on the other counter have the apple cider vinegar with a drop of our thieves dish soap in it. And then they'll fly away from the produce because they'll hate the smell, but then they'll smell the vinegar and they'll fly in and die. <laughs> so that's what I would recommend doing. But this is a great diffuser recipe that smells really fresh. So it's not gonna be something that you won't like the smell of in your kitchen, but it's going to deter pests from sticking around on your produce once it's in your house, okay? And then the other thing too for keeping your harvest fresher longer is making sure that you have clean storage containers. Okay, when you like cut them up and you put them in the fridge or if you're keeping them on the counter in a closed container. I love our thieves dish soap. Love it. Um, I actually, my hack is I make a foaming soap with it just so it lasts longer. But this is, I think, by far the best dish soap that I've ever used. So make sure that you're really keeping your containers clean as well because that'll help you keep your produce longer. All right. Does anybody can? <laughs> so if you maybe planted like, you know, four tomato bushes, chances are you're going to have more tomatoes than your family can eat. <laughs> so you're going to have to do something with them, right? So an idea that you could do is you could can some tomato sauce. Um, canning is obviously a topic that we could talk for forever. So I'm going to try to keep it really brief. Yes, pickles, Morgan. Um, in order to can, say, for example, 30 quarts of spaghetti sauce, you're gonna need a crap ton of oregano, lots of oregano. And if you've ever bought dried or even fresh herbs, it adds up quick, like those packs of herbs are expensive. So if you remember in the beginning, I talked about how essential oils are highly concentrated in liquid form. So that means that they pack a huge punch and flavor with just one drop. So for example, a large pot of spaghetti, and I'm talking like a large, like 30 quart large pot of spaghetti sauce, you'd only need like one to three drops, depending on like your flavor tolerance of oregano. I suggest starting with one, tasting it to make sure you like it. Um, but you can basically use oregano vitality oil in place of the dried oregano herbs. So you can save yourself a ton of money by doing that. It has a really rich and pure flavor. So not only does it taste great, but it saves you money. And it's also a high quality ingredient. Um, Young Living has an entire line of vitality oils, not just oregano. So there's a great selection of herbs and spices and even citrus oils that you can take a look at. And they are all non-GMO certified. So that's huge. And if you need to know the vitality, so the vitality oils are the ones with the white labels, like the picture in this, has oregano and it's a white bottle. So that's how you'll know what are vitality oils and what aren't, is if they have a white label, they are labeled safe for ingestion and you can use those for ingesting, cooking, canning, um, you name it, you can do it that way. So the herbs and spices from our vitality line are great for canning. All right, so we cannot leave out the gardener because let's face it, as much fun and as relaxing as gardening can be, if you're out there for a long time, you're going to probably hurt, especially if you're pulling a lot of weeds or you're doing a lot of intense yard work. Um, and Young Living has products that could help you too. So muscle love, okay? 
our sore muscles at the end of a day when you've been working in your garden all day, you can use the Deep Relief Roll-On. It's one of my favorite things to use, as well as Pan Away, which comes in your kit. So if you don't have your oils yet, Pan Away is one that you do get in your kit. And then also one that's not on the screen that I love is our CBD Muscle Rub. That's my go-to with any kind of aches and pains. And I spent like six hours a couple weeks ago pulling weeds in our backyard and I ached really, really bad and I used the muscle rub and it just melted the pain away. Um, so make sure that you have something that you can use. So if you have pan away, put it in a 10 milliliter roller and you can rub it on or you can just apply some coconut oil and a couple drops on top of the skin if you don't have a roller bottle. Um, the deep relief roller is one that you can purchase and just it just comes in a roller so you just automatically roll it on. And then the other thing that you should always make sure that you have on hand is lavender. So when you're gardening, you're gonna get scrapes and cuts. Like even if you're wearing gloves, you might get it up here in your arm, whatever. Sometimes maybe you're just going to pull some weeds and you don't have gloves on and you end up like scratching your hand. So lavender is a great one for soothing your skin or maybe if you got a little too much sun and didn't like reapply sunscreen, I am guilty of that. Yeah, Morgan's raising her hand, she's guilty of that. So lavender is a really great one that you can use. Um, and this soothing stick is one that you can use kind of in place, like if you were to get too much sun. So the soothing stick recipe is lavender purification of peppermint. The peppermint's great because it's gonna cool your skin. So it's gonna help to relieve the hot feeling that you get when you're sunburned. And then the lavender is gonna help cool it. So put this in a 10 milliliter roller and just fill the rest of it with the carrier oil of your choice and just apply as often as you need it, as you need. So you can use this on cuts, scrapes, sunburns, whatever, and it just kind of helps to soothe the skin after being out in your yard all day. So are there any questions? Because we're gonna go and move forward on how to get started with Young Living. So for those of you that are not currently Young Living members, the best way to get started is with your premium starter kit. Um, it comes with the majority of the oils that we talked about in the class, so you'll be able to use them in your garden right away. And you get 12 of our most, most popular oils, they're all pictured here, as well as a gorgeous diffuser, and you get a thieves spray and a waterless hand sanitizer, plus samples of our super packed um, nutritious drink called Nature Red. Um, you also get a few other goodies with no strings attached membership. So you get your wholesale membership by getting your kit, which basically gives you 24% off the retail price for life. You simply have to place an order of at least 50 PV a year to maintain that discount. So it's super easy to maintain that. But once you're a member, you're a member for life. And this kit is valued over $400 for only $165 will get you started. So great, great, great deal. And you'll want to make sure that when you get your kit, you're going to set it up as your first essential rewards order. So essential rewards is our monthly loyalty program. And it's a subscription and you get to pick what you get each month. And you get to choose when it processes and how much it is. So you can leave it as is every month if you want the same thing every month or you can change it up and try things that are different. So you can enroll in Essential Rewards right away when you get your starter kit and you can count it as your first ER box, which means you're going to get a freebie oil for making that choice. And what's awesome about that is this month's freebie is citronella. And I talked about citronella in this class because it's really, really important and great for deterring pests. So when you get your kit, you'll make it your first ER and you'll get the 12 oils plus citronella. And um, if you would prefer, you can always go the basic kit and you can add on all different kinds of products. Like if you wanna get the fruit and veggie wash and you wanna get the seeds dish soap and some of the other oils that we talked about too, that's an option as well. Whoever invited you to this class, just reach out to them and ask them for their link so they can help you get started and they can walk you through the whole process. And that's it. So you can go ahead and unmute yourselves if you have questions and you'd like to ask them, or if you don't want to talk, you can always type them as well. Maybe. Everybody's been super quiet in the classes. 
never know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> Anybody? Nope. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording here.